This is Lyle Dennis of GMVolt.com, and this is a day I can say I've been waiting for for more than two years. I'm standing here with a prototype or a mule version of the Chevy Volt extended range electric car. Uh, it's actually in a cruise, a Chevrolet cruise shell, but it has the true uh, Chevy Volt drivetrain, uh, the full 16 kilowatt hour pack, the, the motor, and the engine that the final vehicle will see close to form, although not fully refined as I understand it. And I'm here today on the Milford Proving Grounds uh, to actually get in the car and test drive it. My day has come. So here I am. I'm in the Chevy Volt Mule prototype car. And the car is actually running, isn't it? It's, yes. Uh, but of course, we don't hear anything. There's a little button that you press to start the car. It's, it's lit up green. Of course, this interface is not uh, what the final Volt looks like. This is what the Chevrolet Cruze uh, interior is. But I'm about to take off. So I'll put it into gear, stepping on the brake. And go ahead to the left here. Make a left here. Yes. Okay, here I am. Total silence. I love that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's very smooth. Not too much traffic to here to worry about. No. We'll go straight through here. Just go straight? Yes. Mad man, but so I can tell you, you feel it's very smooth. And maybe this is what we'll do here is make a left where it says RH Lutheran. Okay. Got a stop sign here and then just go to the left. Wow. This is a very refined car, I'd say. Seemingly to be, anyway. Okay, just go straight down here so you can go ahead and give some acceleration. There you go, wow. I would stay there to the right here for the most part, and the left side has got uh, some uh, wow. of the So you just feel the power. Very silent. And do you get some regenerative? When you take your foot off the accelerator, do you regenerate on in that uh, situation? Yes, in fact, we have, and I'm not sure, is it in uh, D or L? It's in a it's four. A four. Yeah. Should Which, it be in four? Uh, well, that gives you more regenerative. Uh, what I'll do here, maybe it's just uh, moving forward one spot. Whoa, that now was you'll get less. No wonder uh, I, I, okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you, you, some people like it either way. No, I felt uh, that, I in felt the that. drive position, you get more coast when you take your foot off the accelerator. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, low position, you can get more regenerative braking when you take your foot off the accelerator. So you get uh, uh, a, an opportunity, really, in city driving to potentially drive with uh, almost one foot. So you can't really know there's a big difference between a combustion car. It's, it's the, I guess the idea is to make it so that it's seamless. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the, this you know, car doesn't have any transmission in it, so that's one of the big things is you get that uh, instantaneous torque and acceleration. So stepping on the brakes, you know, some of these things you hear this vacuum pump sound. You don't hear anything here when you step on the brakes. No. Is it a vacuum uh, pump in the brakes? Or? No, it's electric uh, boost. Oh, I see. Wow, you feel it just take right off. Very exciting. Yeah, you don't have any of that shifting effect, obviously, being that there's no transmission. Right, it's a one speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, and your top speed here, of course, I won't do that, but is uh, 100 yeah, miles do, an hour? Yeah, it'll do 100 miles an hour. Do 100 miles an hour. Yes. Okay. It's a very instant effect. Yeah, I think a lot of people very have sound. the wrong impression of electric vehicles. Yeah. You've driven enough to know what electric vehicles can do. Because uh, you know, this is not a city electric vehicle. This yeah, is this vehicle is a that, highway capable. You can, you know, you, clearly this you feel very comfortable in this on the highway. Oh yeah. I mean, this is essentially like the highway here. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, this will do uh, anything that a conventional vehicle. Can, can I go through? This is like, uh, I guess what it was like sort of when they were driving the first horseless carriages uh, after being in horses and buggies. Yep. Now we're uh, through the, another frame shift in the history of the automobile. How many uh, amps 
can this accept in charging? Uh, you know, the certain uh, yeah, voltage is 220, but how many amps? The max charge rate is 3.3 .3, uh, kilowatts, so that works out to about 16 amps. Do you feel that this particular mule handles identically to a cruise, or is it a little uh, different because it's got a different stuff inside of it? Yeah, I, I think it's it's very similar to where we'll be, and where we'll be with the bolt. I mean, there's still additional yeah. refinements coming, though, so you know, this isn't the, uh, the final. You know, so impressive about this car is that it's a car. It's a normal, you know, you know, well-designed, regular car. It's not a, a toy. It's not a, something that's, you know, very slow. Or, you know, like I said, like a neighborhood vehicle. It's like a regular, you know, car. I mean, and, and yet you're not using gas. I think that's the yeah. most important, obvious uh, thing about it. It's very fun a vehicle that will do what everybody needs and displays petroleum. Exactly. Really? But this one's... Uh, <laughs> That's pretty heavy duty. I don't think I've ever seen a hell like uh, We have one close. much bigger than this, actually. <laughs> so it, it's not Pike's Peak, but we're going to take it up this hill. Here we go. And, you know, you just kind of take off. Ah. And, uh, so I've got it floored, basically. Now, so there's going to be this. There's going to be a limitation to how fast you can go up a steep hill. Would you say that's true? Uh, well, depending on the hill, certainly. Like, and in this like, one, there, there's a stop sign, unfortunately, right at the top of the. But you know, it has no trouble with. Uh, no, it has no as trouble. Steep as you would find in most the public roads. As if you wanted to run air conditioning at a modest rate mm -hmm. on a warmish day and keep yourself comfortable, uh, would that chew out of the 40 mile range? Well, everything you do does take energy out of the battery, so it depends on uh, you know how much air conditioning you're using or how much heat you're using, things yeah. like that, yeah. as to what the impact would be. I mean, I think uh, very uh, you know mild use of it is not going to have a significant difference. Mm, okay, so and the heat it, it the depends heat, on the amount. You the use. heat's electric. The heat is electric as well, so that's also something that uh, you know. I'd, I think you know for one of the things we're going to do, for instance, is make electric uh, or uh, heated seats standard, and that will help because we think that uh, it, it's very efficient to heat the person directly, uh, and that will give you uh, you know that the, the comfort level uh, without putting as much energy into the the cabin heat as you might otherwise need. I'm not going to get to experience the switchover. Mm -hmm. Is that particular reason why you don't want to? No, we're we're continuing to develop that. I mean, I, we'll we'll be ready to demonstrate that to you before long. Okay. So, so it, right now you're uh, is keeping that under wraps. Yeah. So no, right? it, it's not going to be. Uh, I, I wouldn't describe it as abrupt at all. In fact, uh, the motor coming on, uh, it, it actually transitions to I'll say the more the sound of a normal car. Uh, that's all it is. So it's so nothing start abrupt. to hear a car sound. And you hear the gas engine coming on, but I will say uh, in, in some of the drives that we've done, sometimes people don't even recognize when it's happened. Mm. Engine RPMs will not be tied to yeah. the accelerator, accelerator pedal position. Basically, the goal of the engine generator is to provide the average amount of additional electricity you need to yeah. maintain propulsion. Yeah. So it's even possible that once it comes on that it'll go back off for a period of time. It mm -hmm. depends on how you're driving. Uh, what we want to do, again, is, is maximize electricity as a fuel and minimize gasoline as a fuel. So if the, uh, the, the engine generator is starting to recharge the battery, it'll actually shut off so that you can then use that energy that you've put in the battery. The goal being when you arrive home, mm -hmm. we want to use as much of the grid energy mm -hmm. as we can. Mm -hmm. Not only because we want to minimize the use of the gasoline, <clears throat> but because the grid energy, on average, is about one sixth the cost mm -hmm. of the gasoline. Oh, sure. So Absolutely. we think the the customer will really appreciate that as well.